label in 1990. What was the initial intention in the very beginning? I mean, it might have changed now, but what was it initially? No, still the same. Uh, just to put out some tunes. Uh, initially, I suppose it was just me um, working on my own, just wanting to put out some music myself. But uh, it's still the same. We just put tunes out so that we can hear them out of the weekend, uh, either ourselves playing them or our friends that are DJs. And that's why we make them. And is there kind of, do you have a kind of overall, is there an overall thing that is Moving Shadows? Is there an overall ethos that you kind of stick to? Uh, pretty much that, really. It's, it's just um, doing everything for the weekend. We just, we live for that. Um, not, not quite as... Uh, I don't know, silly sounding as that really, but because it, it is uh, quite a big thing. There's there's a whole scene that's uh, part of music and lifestyle. It isn't just uh, about going out and getting off your face at the weekend. There's there's a whole uh, angle there and the business side of it as well. But uh, that's what we really love doing. We used to get off our faces every weekend though. We used to when we had time. We ain't got time to get off our faces. <laughs> well, I am. All the time, though. All the time. Goldie, what about you? I mean, from sort of, I mean, I know you sort of, you have a working relationship that's well known with Rob, but I mean, as far as moving shadow, I mean, what do you kind of think from a kind of different perspective than that? Well, I was always with, you know, I was always reinforced as an independent. Rob was the only other independent out there. It was, you know, I came into the scene and I was listening to um, early stuff with Two Bad Mice and stuff. We both he's got the same club. He's got a rage and I used to hear, you know, hear it from the. I was from the outside, so I heard early moving shadow stuff when it was an established label. You know what I mean? Same as reinforced. Cause I was wanting to get on to reinforce at the time, and there was just re, there was re, there was reinforced moving shadow and um, production house. I mean, really, it were established yeah. labels. You know what I mean? And, and um, I think it was it was just the. Uh, Kind of mutual respect with working with Rob, you know, and getting to know the guys beyond behind it. Because I think with when it was like rave music and the culture of it, we wanted to just um, you wanted to see the people behind it because it was faceless. It was really cool because the, you know it was just kids who were making the music. You know what I mean? And uh, some of the biggest tunes, which were like the anthems, I think Blame was one of the big ones, wasn't it for mm. me? And, yeah. And uh, Wear Mask for me. It was Wearmass, wasn't it? It was, was going to mix up, didn't I? Wearmass was one of, the, you know, one of the biggest influences when I, when I heard groove play like that. Um, and it just had the... Uh, it was really bad, because I'd been in the States, so I got back and it was just... It was really, like, UK, raw. Um, and I think then we just... I just always wanted to kind of hook up and see each other out. And I guess I just got into what it was about and, try to, you know, we did our first project. What was it with... Uh, Fury. No, it was a remix. It was. Uh, oh, that you did. Yeah. You know, so it remix that it was wrong. You know, I was talking about phrases and I messed up a few times trying to get it sorted. And then, uh, but um, you know, I think it works better, better later on now because Rob's very. You know, it's got an established label. You know, it's an independent label. You know, I've uh, struggled to keep my independent and do what I've got to do. And. Uh, here we are, like three or four years later, in the West End. Do you know what I mean? In, in the Trident Building. Do you know what I mean? It's now Movie Shadows headquarters and my headquarters for doing our projects together and stuff. Um, <coughs> it's quite, it's quite strong. That is, do you know what I mean? It's really, it's quite a strong statement. It says it, you know, in, in a short space of time. I mean, you know, Rob's very uh, worked very hard to do that, and I've been very kind of like on the scene, going out all the time. And I think that's the, the, the kind of balance. It's more of a bond, do you know what I mean, with that. Um, I mean, sort of, if you go back, I mean, Goldie's kind of brought things up to date from his perspective, but sort of looking mm. back, I mean, from the initial, I mean, those early releases, I mean, how do you feel about, you know, the, say, the very sort of number one and number two? Classics. Yeah, there's uh, there's nothing that's ever been put out that I'm uh, embarrassed to have put out. It's, it's just some good tracks on there. They've always been uh, a period of the time of the scene and they've always meant a lot to us and everyone else at the time. So we're, we're well proud of everything that's been put out. Mm. I mean, is there any kind of... Because the the, la the label has a reputation for the, um, the varied artist roster. I mean, it mm. all kind of has a common thread, yeah. which is a, you know, a similar sound, but everybody's doing their own thing and pushing the sound and it's evolving so I mean as far as kind of not for want of a better word but the kind of A&R and &R, what, what you choose to actually put out I mean is there a kind of strict or kind of a not, thing that you keep to mm, the only thing is it's just a reflection of the scene whatever the scene happens to be doing that's what we do because that's what we 
are doing uh, the way we live our lives. So uh, should the day ever come when the scene starts making guitar rock music, then, then maybe we'll be doing that as well. But yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and we do it, so I think it's a. No, but it, that's the way. This it's not nothing's going <coughs> to change that radically, but um, whatever is happening within our scene at the at the moment is how we live our lives, and it has a, a certain style to it um, that we keep within. We don't go out, and we're not forcibly going out and changing it, mm. and, and going to make it into that. Oh yeah, I think that the. Um it's the DJs that change that as well. The cutting edge DJs that are doing that, they respond to, well, for me going out and getting off my nut, they respond to the mixes. But people have to give them the tunes. Yeah, but those are two tunes then nice. cause something else, which then makes the artist go back yeah. and, and bounce. Do you know what I mean? It's not as if, like, let's follow what he's doing. You know, you know, me, I've never followed anybody's doing. I just do my thing. But I think it, most labels that started off like that, it was always about get into the middle of the DJ set and they bounce off, I don't know, they bounce off a Mimi Shadow tune with a, you know, it could have been a living dream tune or it could have been a living dream tune into a, you know, in, in, into a, a, a room fortune or whatever else, but it was in the middle where something else went back and went, right, right, and you go back. So it, it, that's where it creates the triangle, do you know what I mean, with that kind of thing. I mean, there's always a thing as well, um, although you say you're not going out to change anything, but there's kind of a thing that I think most people are doing with labels and especially DJing as well, is actually keeping the scene moving forward. Mm. So it's not actually sort of trying to change it but as you say sort of those things in the middle it's yeah. that's where but that's the thing that's always created that's always fresh and exciting for us because it is always changing that's why we love doing and um, being part of it and uh, being involved and making tracks that do change but you're forced to change you don't really look back on it you know some of the stuff that when, when we're doing it it's like when you know when you grow up we've grown up in this we, we've grown up in jungle we've grown up in it so you know, when I was mixing Phil Collins with, you know, Eamon Brothers, it was like, you're having fun with the music and you're enjoying yeah. it, you know? You know, Jungle has become, like, the under, you know, the, the kind of overcurrent of it. But drum and bass has always been the undercurrent of it. We just happen to... It just happens to be the only music that is on that cutting edge, so you can't help but get involved in technology. You can't help but be on the cutting edge of it, so... Everything does then turns back around three years later and looks at, at this as being whatever it is, because it's the, the bottom line of it all, so... For us, it's good. I think you, you, you for you to agree, we have a catalogue of stuff to look back on. You know, I'm mm. now sampling stuff from early, early stuff, early, early Scotty stuff, early Nucky stuff, early whatever. You know, we could now there's a catalogue of looking back on it. Before we couldn't really look back. We were just doing it. It's a melting pot. We were just laying stuff down, like we said, just for the weekends, and then all of a sudden we've just really now had to become analytic about it and look back and think, wow, do you know what I mean? All of a sudden it's caught up with us, but we've had the we've had the technology with it as well, you see, so and that's what's made it, you know, cutting edge I guess. You can't help but be on that edge. There's nothing else you can do, you know, we're just joyriding. And mm -hmm. and and for I mean everybody on the scene, be it from V Records to to uh, you know, to Carl, you know, to um to, you know, whatever. I mean, so from different labels, different labels. They've all, they've all evolved, and now those artists that we've all worked with are now in some way or another doing their own album projects. The bigger picture, you know, the the the, the wider audience, whatever else. Um, and, and it's all coming. It all comes to us. We're not trying to put it out there. You know, you, you're not trying to say, right, how can we catch this market? The market turned around and said they're they're actually happen to be having it. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it so sorry to interrupt both, but I mean Rob, as far as you're concerned, I mean does moving shadow in a way have have a role within this? Within within the scene kind of thing, within the whole thing that's happening. I mean, is there something that you know at the end of it, if you look back, I mean, how do you kind of see it within? Yeah, very much because we've been here and we've been uh, structured enough to keep part of that going, and there have been organisations and certain people that have been involved in the scene, that have been instrumental in keeping the whole thing going forward anyway. Um, and Moving Shadow has been a part of that. Uh, that's why you know, we're still here, we've been doing it right from the beginning. So, What do you personally attribute to the success of it? 
I mean, is it that you, you've been quite in, you know, your whole thing is the integral, you know, sticking to the roots. You are one of the original independents and you've stayed that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think that has a lot to do with the kind of the mentality behind the label has to do with the, the success of it? Uh, I think the success of the whole scene is that nothing of it's been forced. It's just people having a go and doing what they like doing mm. and it's not been people sitting down going we, we want to create this we're going to do this we're going to do that we're going to do that and having a big plan uh, most of it's kind of just tripped over and fallen over by itself and it's uh, bumbled along a bit through its existence and uh, and that's been you know kept it fresh mm. there's nothing I think, yeah, I think the main the main thing is that people's people's other people's attitudes have changed towards you. Like, you yeah, know, when people you, have come round. People have come round, but also there's, there's you know there's the people that have kind of like you know they were you know now eating the rats, which is old old news. You know what I mean? But um, it just it just being normal about it and just being keeping integrity to the music is something which has always happened. And when it's become mm. overground, we just gone back underground, and now it's the point where. We, we can we can do really what the hell we want to do, which is why me and Rob decided, you know, I've said, you know, I want to do an album project. We, I believe we can keep it where we want to keep it and have control over it. So much control that German bass artists have over any other thing because it's, it is, there's nothing else to judge it. And when there's nothing else to judge that, then it's fresh and people are going to be hesitant to do that. There have been people who have done record deals and they get shafted by the record company or the artist runs around to cash or whatever else, which is to be expected. But I think that the the balance is now better than it ever was because the artists have control. People are looking beyond the, inverted commas, commercial jungle thing, do you know what I mean? Um, and like I said, Rob's just, just gone on, carried on executing what you're executing, and I think it, it makes it better generally, do you know what I mean? Because we... It's just something that's going to just carry on getting wider and wider, whatever, you know. You know, people, you know, say America and everything else and blah, blah, blah. I think it's, I think it's also the uh, the patient, you know, I'm very impatient with a lot of things, you know what I mean? I'm very hot headed with things like that. I think Rob's patience with Movie Shadow has been outstanding in terms of like, you know, I mean, sort of to be patient, get you out of bed, you know what I mean? Kind of like, you know. Put, put, put a push behind you that sometimes you don't really have. So I go out on a scene and go out and, and ride or keep me going on a music tip and wrangle all the boys and frost it all plain. It gives you a, it gives you the kind of like spirit of it to carry on doing it. Um, I think Rob, it gives you the backbone of knowing that you, you that we can do productively what anybody can do in any other studio. But yet, and even better, do you know what I mean? From Trevor Horn's studio to anybody's studio, I just think it, you know, must be, it's nice and big and everything else. But I still think we can work the floor with people experimentally. No matter what it is, do you know what I mean? Which is what, you know, I've got a, something to bounce off that way, you know. Artistically, I can bounce off and we can technically go and do things which we could never have done before. Production on this music has been was very trashy for, to begin with, which was quite quite rebel, rebel, do you know what I mean, with the music. But that's the sound of what it was then. And now, you know, it's. Um, the, is the production has become quite lush, but it's also become be quite quite hard. It's gone back to being mm -hmm. how it was, gone back to being dark and hard, and and I think a cross between everything. Do you know what I mean? Had your relationships, working relationships, stayed pretty much the same since you first started working together? Well, he shares my pants now, and I wear his t-shirts. Um, yeah. Yeah, it gets yeah. better though, I think. It just gets better. Yeah. It gets, it gets, I hope it gets better. I'll give me a kiss. Thanks, Get off. No, it's, um, it's good for me because I've learned a lot, do you know what I mean? Because you know, it all blows up and it blows up and you're trying to stay like as, as in the norm and you're like, people get freaked out by it and it freaks me out, do you know what I mean? It, just, it freaks me out a bit and people get me bugged out by it because it was just being a character, do you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, there's still, it's just music we're making. Um, our relationship's been like, it's just a. Uh, I couldn't really work with certain people. There's not many people I can work with, do you know what I mean, to be able to, the way that I am, full on and whatever else. We have our own kind of code with that, do you know what I mean? It's a, we have our own kind of language with it. We're married in that kind of sense, do you know what I mean? What do you, how do you cope with him? <laughs> uh, with difficulty. <laughs> I've got this big stick. No, I've got a monkey barrel on me. Yeah, yeah. Chain him down to the side of the, the seat. desk. Yeah. 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 Pins my ears back in there. <laughs> um, um, again, sort of going back to, to Rob, the kind of progression and development of what's happened as far as the, the sound through the releases, through the different artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
Can you sort of run through how you think, sort of, especially with, say, the, the this year's releases, the most current releases, how it's actually changed? Uh, what, from time? Uh... Well, the, well, kind of... From from say the start, from all the releases right the way through, kind of obviously you know there's well there's how many hundred eleven. Yeah. I mean just sort of if you sort of just mentioned if you could just sort of run us through how you think it, the sound has actually developed. It's all gone through different styles right from just after the rave days. Um, it, it came off of that techno kind of influence stuff that we were doing right at the beginning, uh, right through almost what's now called happy hardcore because it was that, that kind of rave uh, kind of, now kind of cheesy sound to it happy <laughs> very happy no it was the king of cheese you know we always say it was the king of cheese I think Rob was king of cheese I anyway always. Yeah, but back to it, like, we always have this thing about who was, was, was the real king of cheese. We all made cheesy records back then, but that was it. That's, that's cheese, what the scene was. Cheese, I, um, I, never any, I never made any real stilted. <laughs> I, I never really drew out any stilted, but... Uh, then it went uh, kind of a bit more serious after that and went very underground, uh, basically because of all the... It was the return after all the, the commercialism of all the rave stuff then. And then um, came out with some more more serious sounds and, and darker sounds the first time around that was I think I drew that a few there yeah. who drew that a few um and then really right up to uh through all the new the jump up stuff the jazzy stuff right through to currently the, the hardcore uh, the real hard 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 stuff I yeah, that's the that's the camera right. that's yeah, the, the cameraman that's the thing. cameraman messing up big time whose name he adopted his wages <laughs> so that's cool he, he was going again but you know that's just part of it um, we'll sample that thank you that's off so, anyway um yeah so right the way through i mean and also talking a bit earlier about sort of the sudden well not sudden but over the last couple of years the interest which sort of a lot of people must be sort of that you know from years back. Well, Gutted because, because they never signed what they were supposed to. <laughs> so, no, I mean, a lot yeah. of you must be laughing, but I mean, those people sort of picking up on drum and bass now. I mean, surely, do they have to, do you think? Not, do I mean, are they quite, is it fine that they haven't had any history, seen how it's developed to this kind of sound? I mean, can do you kind of, are you a bit skeptical about people when they sort of pick up on it? And no, because you can't, you can't be, because if, if you have that attitude, it's like, you know, for me, you know, it was, I was always very dubious and very, to make that that step to whatever else people felt being scared of if the record company controls too much. But if you're an artist and you have control of what you have, you just have it or you don't, one or the other. But I think from my point is that the, that, that uh, you know, you can't, you, you just got somebody into drum and bass when you jungle, whatever way we come into it. You can't knock that because if that's the case, then New York will put a wall around it and no one can listen to hip hop, do you know what I mean? Or wear a baseball cap to the side and whatever else, do you know what I mean? It's just that culture. It came from a subculture which then became a multi million pound business. But do you think to actually be able from to the public side? Yeah, kind of to understand yeah. where it's developed. They don't have to, do they? I mean, do they really have to understand that? You know, it's like, it's like do you have to understand the Wu Tang album completely around the way? You don't really have to understand that, do you? If you like the music, you like it. You know what they're rapping about is could be, is very internal affairs, really. And what we're making music for, mood-wise, is what's going on in our heads and what goes mm -hmm. on at our clubs and goes on there and develops from that thing. Outside of that, it's when you're talking albums or anything else, it's, it's a daydream or it's a nightmare or it's a, an experience or something else. And people will understand that when they, when artists are now making albums, they can actually sit down. It's not a compilation album; they can actually sit down and listen to it as an album. Do you know what I mean? It's at that stage, but there's still going to be that cutting edge, and, and people go to the clubs and get off on it, and they hear something and they think right I'll go out and buy that album I'll go and buy that compilation and listen to what they're listening to you, you can't you can't knock the public for doing that because it's it's very uh, it's very very the word is uh, which I've had the word said to me actually it's quite funny actually the word is uh, uh, what is that word that word of uh, elitist What's it all about, you know? And then it's like, you know, intelligent and all this, you know? It's like we need a men's degree to go and listen to, to, to drum and bass, you know? You know, it's just music, isn't it? It's rhythm and that's it. I don't for the public, you know, the public, if we don't get into it, everyone, you know, so we can't dance in time to it or whatever else, or how do we get this stuff, you know? It's very hip and very trendy at the moment and, and, and whatever else, but, you know, it'll still blow over, but the blowing over has kind of stopped now because the music has become a very integral part of 
European music, world, world music now, as opposed to being, this is the latest fashion from London, do you know what I mean? It plays a very big role. For people like Barry looking back in it, to I mean, Nine Inch Nails and Henry Rollins and, you know, and these are serious cats that are kind of like looking at, you know, it's a serious lot of people who are looking at it now, do you know what I mean? Which, which does mean something if they're looking back on it, do you know what I mean? And what were you going to say about it? With the uh, We Don't Mind, it isn't an elitist thing. Coming from uh, our side of things, it doesn't make a difference who's following it. Uh, like members of the public, you, you can't say uh, you can't be into it because you, you weren't in it from the start and things like that. People um, have had other things to do. Uh, they've had other scenes that they've been into for that time. And uh, so what? It didn't matter to us that they weren't into it then. It doesn't matter to us if they are into it now. Uh, we just do our thing. If people pick up on it, fine. And, and if they get something from it, fine. If they don't, they don't. Yeah. It doesn't bother us. We were sampling that music anyway. We were sampling world music. We, we, you know, when we first started making this music, we were grabbing whatever we wanted to, and there were no rules. So what we were sampling from was like European, UK music and world music, and, and we were having a laugh with it, you know? So, and it wasn't. I mean, can you remember back to, um, I mean, each how, when you first got involved with doing what you're doing, I mean, can you remember what it was? You know, everyone has different reasons for why they picked up a guitar or why they started playing around with computers and music. I mean, do you know what it was? Blatantly, mine was just growing up in the UK and being moved around so much that I picked up so much music. I picked up stuff from Stranglers to, to you know, to Muffini to whatever. I just picked up music along the way, and that's just going around in your head. You grow with it. You remember that music from 10 CC to or whatever, you know, you remember all these things about the music and you put it together and different eras of the music, you know, and I think, it's like Rob was a DJ many, many years ago and I think he was into his, his soul stuff, you know, and like, you know, and I has got a few all dayers and got a Nottingham and Rob used to play that kind of music, do you know what I mean? So, you all kind of pick up on those styles of music, you no know, different than Massive when that kind of road groove thing, when they used, when it used to be free then it used to be Wild Bunch, it was, Bristol was a different thing then, it always had that rare groove parties and it, each little pocket of these things picked up on American culture and it came there and it's all inserted from blues in, in Birmingham or Sheffield we used to go to and you pick it all up and it's, it's, it's very UK, you can't really get it anywhere else from that so it just forms something within its, you know, within its manner I guess, you know. Um, and what about you, Rob? I mean, well, for me, it, it come really th from being, uh, I guess, stuck in a village and growing up in a village. You want to get out as soon as you can, and uh, and then you start exploring things and well, the finding, yeah, and finding uh, um, different music and, and things from what you would normally uh, be brought up on. You know, I, I the stuff that you get played by Radio One and things like that. So you start to go find out there's a whole world of different kind of musics and uh, and the whole uh, soul hip hop side of things was uh, the first thing that I encountered and that just sucked me up and then from the, the technology side of that really uh, what with the either the, the DJ mixing and the whole sampling side of things that, that really got me going and that's that really uh, then started off all of this yeah, I mean, all of this, as you call it. I mean, it's pretty big, all of this. But, yep. I mean, you, looking back, I mean, did you ever envisage you'd be at this point? Now? No. No, I don't think anybody did. No, but like I say, that's that's just it. It was never nothing of this is ever planned. Uh, we we've just been doing it, and this is what's grown out of it, and it's a uh, living nightmare. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Now? <laughs> I mean, go, what about you, God? I mean, genuine, sort of generally, are you kind of. I mean, did you ever think you'd be sort of doing what you're doing? No, I mean, I've painted for, you know, I've been painting graffiti for 12 years. I could never... I just didn't know what I'd do. I just didn't know what, you know, I just thought I'd always be doing that, you know, and I am, st you know, I still do that, and this is, I guess, an extension of that, but, you know, it, it freaks me out. I never thought I'd be making music, and I never thought we'd do what we're doing. Um, mm. When we was finishing the album, we were lying in the bedroom with Stephen, he's under a desk. It's the first play, and we think, you know, it's just this mad track, you know, we just done this whole thing and we just finished off. And we just lied under this desk in Stevenage and we were like still in the bedroom, still on NS10s, you know what I mean? And we're obviously like semi-detached in Stevenage, you know what I mean? And I was, and, and all that happens now is that it just freaks me out because I hear all the tracks we put out from, from the album and everything, all I think about is the A1 driving up there about 120 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And it just puts pieces in your head, you know what I mean? And from that, from that point, I always remember that 
it's been it, has, it is such a blow that I guess I guess it's been it has been such a blow that it, um it does knock you back because you you know as you think right double album phew, you know it takes you a year and all to recover do you know what I mean because it just blows up so much in your face that you know we still you know we're still where we are I still live in the same house you know in the same flat I've been living in for seven years and you know the dog gets bigger you know what I mean your your mind gets bigger you you know your body stays the same so you really are under that kind of thing I've never no none of us knew where it was going do you know what I mean and I think that there's uh, there's so much to look into. It has so much history that even we, like, you know, think, what's that track and what's that? And, it, and it's uh, it's very hard for someone to analyse it from the outside. It must be, I'd like to be you for the day to find out what it is that people mm. see from, from it, because it does freak you out. Um, I think what's important as well is that the amount of different people you meet who, 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 who you see, you know, in the West End, you go out and buy a sandwich and there's some geese in a tie and suit saying, like... I was at the club the weekend, or, um, yeah, what's that, what's that Matt Lesh tune, what's that Ruben Shadow tune, what's that tune on, you know, on, on Prototype, and what's that, you know, and you think, these are normal people that are com from all walks, be it a computer operator, be it an unemployed person, you know, and it's, it's great that the youth culture controls that, you know, they are into that, and they may be into indie, they're into drum and bass, they're into, you know, um, then I think that's what really freaks me out the most, the amount of people that are really now into it as opposed to just being those A and R interest. The A and R interest now has to listen to demand of the of what the the, the street kids are into and it's it's, it's real interest as well because you haven't got people force feeding it to you. You've got to find it out and you've got to go to these certain clubs. So it's people that are really, really interested in it and it's in their heart and that's so much better than uh, going to uh, a normal club and you know exactly what kind of music you're going to hear. Um, you mean the Sharon Tracy club? Yeah, yeah. Oops, careful. <laughs> oh, sorry. You can't be slagging off things, can you? But not on camera. Um, the hundredth edition... The no, I know Sharon Tracy. They're really good friends of mine. I know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do we swear then? You can swear. But did I swear then? <laughs> I don't know if we did swear. Did we swear then? <laughs> No, you didn't. I, no. I didn't do. You didn't. No. Okay. Um, there's a couple of releases that I just want to talk about. The 100th, of course, which features uh, you two and uh, Dom. Dom. Um, can you just sort of give us a, just a little sort of story behind that, just because we're going to sort of play that? Um, well, really, we wanted something uh, a little special to do as the 100th. So uh, I was working with Dom um, anyway, came up with a tune and thought, yeah. There's one side, and uh, then we came up with the other side uh, when we were working together one day, one we hard we, Friday. Were we drunk? We were something. We was angry. We were angry. We were upset. I know it was because Sharon nicked my speakers <laughs> in the car, <laughs> and Tracy's at the keys. It was one of them. I think it's something like that happened. They're not going to get that joke, Goldie, because the other bit won't be in there, oh, so God, that's totally okay. irrelevant. <laughs> okay. She doesn't go clubbing this woman, I can tell she doesn't go out much, does she? You stay in there on the weekends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Just not all the time. Really? We never see you at our clubs. I've been, yes, we've been. Oh, okay. We film there, even. I know you do, I see you. I know Joy was there. I like her. Who? You. Me, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other one is Blueprint. Yep. Yeah, is that kind of like uh, the best of, with a few mixes that are different? Or? Uh, We're talking about Miss. No, Blueprint. album. Oh, right. See, Goldie doesn't know about this. I'm so, yeah, but you know, so. I'm a too bad mice man myself. <laughs> I'm a too bad mice man, that's why. I don't know about this album. Um, I'm going to step about this conversation now. Basically, it's just, uh, yeah, a bit of a best of and a bit of uh, some exclusive new tracks from some of the artists on the label. Um... Not all of the best of because we've kind of gone about halfway back, and we may in the future be doing a even earlier best of. But uh, that's that's uh, to be left. I on. did say to you to put Wehmas on. Best there. of cheese. No, but Wehmas wasn't that cheese. <laughs> it was never cheese. It was one um, of my favourite cheese. So cheese. original bomb scare on there then maybe. Yeah. Well, someone's doing a mix, so you do know about some of that, don't you? It was only three samples, but, you know, that's just yeah, how it was. Goldie's doing one of the mix CDs. Right. Aren't you, Goldie? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah there you go. My list. Actually, there you that, go. That's something I've got to remind you of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now you've got to remind me of. So See, you want a copy the, of Wehmouse for that, don't you? Actually, That's yeah, what you've got to remind me of, isn't it? That's what I've got to remind you of. Yeah. See, that's what there happens. This is thing what happens. Right. See. <laughs> Can I leave now? But it's on camera now, so you can't get out of it. I'm going to get my decks out. I'm going to go in there and get the decks ready. 
<laughs> All right, and um, just the, just finally then, I mean, where do you kind of, where would you like to see it going, just as a nice little sum up future of Moving the Shadow? Um, I'd like to see it carry on. Basically, which it will, um, and that's that's about all. Don't have any grand plans for it. Don't have any uh, big ideas that we're going to take over the universe with it. I mean, um, is it as you said before? I mean, do you sort of see the development of the releases and what you're doing with the label is affected by what's actually happening? Kind of thing. No, not that it's heavily influenced by it, but you sort of move with what what's actually happening. So it is. It, yeah. I mean, what if the scene actually kind of radically quite changed? Well. For one thing, I don't think it would because the the people that are at the forefront of the scene and effectively controlling it, but not without knowing, you know, um, would not change that radically. Uh, it's 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 a movement that's ruled by. It's very democratic. There's lots of people that are in control of it. Uh, they don't know they are, um, but they are, and. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you can see this. You've got to see this. Check this out. <laughs> Let it rip. It's fucking wicked, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, where were we? Anyway, you were saying about yeah. sort of how you see it. I mean, basically evolving and how moving shadow. I mean, you yeah, see I don't... the shadow that we're in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not Goldie. Enough. Um, yeah, I don't think it's not going to change radically. It's always going to be doing what it's doing, and that's kind of the nicest thing on uh, any kind of planning that we happen to do, which is very minimal. We always know that we can be safe with the knowledge that we're going to have uh, this around, and it's going to be around for a long, long time. So, uh, but uh, of actually planning to change it, there, there, there's nothing like that. We're just going to carry on. We have a good time and. Uh, and your other endeavours, clubs, showcases, well, I mean, are you still sort of, that's all, and yep. Section 5 and yep. everything? So everything. <laughs> There's many sides to it, you see. It's not just about uh, making records. And really, um, the record company is a bit of a byproduct, And uh, the whole scene includes people making records, DJs, clubs, shops, magazines now you know there, there's all of that to it and, uh, and we have a little part in all of those um, basically because that is the life we lead so and you managed to do it and you're still yeah. sitting here yeah very tired and, uh, and traveling the world and all, all yeah, that you're off to Japan tomorrow tomorrow morning yeah just got back from the states and Germany so which is why I'm tired um, but yeah and Japan tomorrow but is it just, I mean, just obviously it must be just total enthusiasm that keeps you going. Yeah, yeah. It's great now. I mean, I'm DJing again. I didn't DJ in, in the UK for about six years. Uh, well, three, back to basics. Yep. Played it back to basics, and uh, which is uh, a highlight of my life, I think, so far. It's really good. Um, but DJing again, it's, it's just gone full circle for me, because that's how really I got into this, this whole scene. And... Uh, uh, it's just great again. Uh.